We have nearly cracked the code to YouTube barbers. I can feel it. Once one jumps, they all jump. I'm Toad, and welcome back to Barber News. A change is coming, I can feel it. Tension grows in our industry, and scum is forced to surface. I think years ago, we only had Jeezy to watch on YouTube. And from what we have gathered, that's a very, very low IQ man. He could have accumulated millions from his big following. But he never listened to any advice and thought it couldn't get any bigger than a few free clippers? He later then had to ask TPOB for a lend of money over COVID and still has not paid him back? And then we had the Basio era. We had no choice only to watch this guy and believe what he said. If he had have been charging us back then, we would all have been doomed. But he lacked awareness then also, and it cost him millions. Thankfully, he didn't get any of us back then. Can you imagine how gullible we would have been? Nobody to tell us we are being scammed. We would not have stood a chance. Take a look at this clip. I don't know exactly what he is doing, but I'm getting some moonshine vibes from this. Surely this had no health and safety guidelines. Some say it's shave gel, and some say it's a failed energy drink. Who knows? One thing we do know is that guy will say anything to get himself a sale. It's crazy to think something sold as a high-quality product is basically a test lab experiment. That shows no consideration for barbers or clients was ever a concern. Not even a pair of gloves. And straight into buckets. That's crazy, bro. This is the power of what people can do online. How come they never showed this at the start? Maybe because people respect their own skin. Come on! Maybe I will start my own line of shaving gel and call it Toad Slime. Let me know in the comments if you would buy this. But honestly, I have asked myself a lot of things lately. Have I went too far? Have I gotten out of line? Have I poked at too many bears? Was I about to get bitten back? Sometimes I doubted myself, and then I seen this and it made me realize something. A barber with no idea was guided by kind-hearted barbers with the correct information. Awareness was spreading fast that the best quality products for the best prices are available. This brought a tear to my eye. When we all work together, we can achieve anything, and most importantly, not get ripped off. I need to make a huge public announcement. Yes, you heard it here first that TPOB has launched his USA website now. So go check that out now, it's tpobusa.com. The prices on that website will blow your mind, but be fast. Before we move on, I want you to check this haircut out. Play the clip. have some news on certain brackets I will be speaking about next week. Maybe brackets have finally become useful in the right hands and with some decent brains. Who knows? I have a guest on tonight who I really want to speak with about tonight's boxing, Jake Paul versus Iron Mike Tyson. Caller, you are live. Are you there? I can't wait for this toad. Did you watch the weigh-ins? I sure did, but that slap didn't seem to phase Paul at all. So I wonder how this will go down. So honestly, I think Tyson has three good rounds in him. I think after that, he will start to get tired easy. I mean, he is basically 60, and Jake Paul is in his prime. I really don't think Mike is all there mentally. He looks like he is in space. Maybe one too many mushrooms. Let's talk about Mike, a man who was out here breaking jaws before Jake Paul even learned how to edit a YouTube video. Tyson, the youngest heavyweight champ in history, used to knock grown men out in under a minute, sometimes before they even realized the fight had started. His punches didn't just hurt, they ended careers. And the guy still trains like he's got a score to settle with the world. Oh, and let's not forget, he owns pigeons, because apparently punching people wasn't enough of a flex. Jake's built his whole career dodging punches online, but let's see how that works out when Tyson's throwing them. Sure, Jake has worked hard and trained, but this is Mike freaking Tyson. Jake might have youth on his side, but Tyson has the kind of experience that says, I've been doing this longer than you've been alive, kid. If Jake survives past the first round, he should probably frame the clock as a trophy. 
Tyson doesn't need to beat Jake Paul to prove anything, but if he does, maybe Jake will finally go back to what he's best at, and I don't even know what that is. Maybe it's Disney-related stuff. All right, I get it. Mike Tyson is a legend. No arguments there. But let's be real. We're talking about Jake Paul right now. Tyson isn't in his prime anymore. And yeah, he's still strong. But do you really think a 57-year-old is going to outlast Jake Paul after two rounds? Come on. Jake's younger, faster, and has been grinding nonstop. The guy lives in the gym. And don't forget, Jake Paul has a legit boxing record. Seven wins, four by knockout. Say what you want about his opponents, but the man's been in the ring with former UFC champs and handled his business. He's built for this era of boxing. High intensity, high profile, and he knows how to keep going when the fight gets tough. Tyson might come out swinging in the first round, sure, but by the third, he'll be gassed. The dude hasn't gone deep in a fight in years. Jake's going to play it smart, survive the early storm, and then start picking him apart when Tyson's breathing heavy. Tyson's good, no doubt. But Jake's got the youth, the conditioning, and the game plan to make this his night. Don't sleep on him. I love how you dissect things so perfectly. You're a natural at this type of work. Seriously, it gives me goosebumps listening to you break it down. You've got a way of making your point so clear it's like you're calling the fight before it even happens. Honestly, I'm so excited about this fight tonight. It's one of those moments where the whole world stops to watch. Whether it's for the nostalgia of Tyson stepping in the ring or the curiosity to see if Jake Paul can really back up his talk, everyone's tuning in. This isn't just a fight, it's an event, and I can't wait to see how it all plays out. By the way, do you know a guy called Phil Blends? He keeps asking asking me for money, claiming he's selling Lego or something. I don't know, the whole thing sounds sketchy, but I figured I'd ask. Oh, just block him, that's a bad guy. You don't want him messaging you. He is a troubled fella. He kept mentioning how he was supposed to be the pissed off barber, and how he is much funnier. I felt sorry for him, but I could see he was just evil. I gotta go toad. Get me back on soon, I love barber news. It's honestly my favorite show. Oh brother, I can't believe how carried away we got over this fight but it really is history in the making. I mean, imagine Mike just knocks Jake out cold, or if I see Mike get knocked out at that age, I will cry. I also heard Mike is broke, and maybe he could just go in and give up after a few light rounds. Either way, I am excited about it. Give me your thoughts on this fight, please. One of my favorite things about being a barber was talking about topics like this, and everyone would become pro boxing fans the day before the fight, and every possible outcome nobody would get it right and then we would all stay silent until the next event and the repeat went on for years. Is everything we speak about in the barbershop complete and utter nonsense? I always try mix things up with my barber show and make it comfortable for everyone to enjoy. If you like this episode of Barber News, please hit the like and subscribe. And remember to check out tpobusa.com, the fastest growing clipper brand in the world. Stay safe everyone, I'm out, peace!